fascia stretch training, otherwise called FST7, is a type of training that was created by Hanny Rambod, who has coached so many of the Olympia athletes to the world's best physiques. So it is intense. It is very, very uh, difficult for your body. So I want to talk you through a, f a few things that you need to know about this style of training as you go into this program. So first and foremost, the benefits of doing FST7 are that you are going to round out your muscle bellies so much faster. You're going to create the most dimension and definition between each of your muscles, and you're going to get more work achieved in less time. So in order to achieve more work in less time, you know it's going to be pretty intense on your body. You got to go in there with the right mindset. You've got to make sure you are fueled. You've got to make sure you are rested. Don't you dare go try and go do some FST7 on not a full night's rest. If that happens, I want you to default to the other option I'm going to tell you about because here is the real fact. FST7 cannot and should not be done for every muscle group every day. If you are doing it correctly, it is going to be too intense for your body. So given the plan that you're viewing, here is the default. If you aren't going to do FST7, then you're going to default to three sets of 12. Okay, 12 is like that, okay, on that same lift. But FST7, I want you to, if you have been very consistent with your working out and your training, then I would like for you to do maximum three to four days of FST7. The other days, I want you to default to the three by 12. So when you go into doing FST7, let's talk about what it is. When it comes to fascia, first of all, that is what surrounds the muscle belly. So the look of your body, the look of your muscles is going to depend on the type of fascia you have. Uh, the longer and leaner and more uh, of, of an ectomorph body type you are, it's going to be more difficult to round out those muscle bellies. Whereas if you're more of a metamorphic uh, body type where you may be a little bit shorter, a little bit fuller muscles. It's easier. You might call yourself stocky. I don't really like that word, but you have shorter muscle bellies and so they're easier to grow. So the fascia difference is very interesting. So when you are doing FST7, you are stretching that fascia. So I like to think of it like blowing up a, a balloon. But if you, when you're doing the set, if you rest, then it's like letting all the air come back out. And so a typical approach to lifting is like expand. Okay, now let it retract. Expand, retract. Well, in FST7, you're only going to get 30 seconds of rest time. That means it's like you don't have time to let all the air out. So each set of seven sets, you are going to be blowing that up bigger and bigger and bigger. So FST7, seven refers to the sets. So 12 reps seven sets on one lift. That means you need to sit there, you need to focus. Most of the time it's easier if you are uh, by a machine or cables or something that you can easily and incrementally change the weights once in a while. We'll do some dumbbell stuff as you'll see on your plan. But uh, if you're doing this at home, here's the fact is you could even do sets one, two, and three, your base sets with a particular weight of dumbbells or resistance band. And you will find because of the high intensity, because if you're focusing and really creating tension on those muscles, you might not need a ton of weight to finish out the seven sets. What matters most is that you are lifting the maximum amount for the ability the muscle has in that set. You need to finish 12 reps. If you get to like, you're on set four, and you get to rep number eight and you're like, there is just no way. You quickly drop the weight, you finish the 12. You drop the weight and finish the 12, then you take your 30 seconds rest. You better have your eye on the clock or your stopwatch or something because that 30 seconds is critical. You get after it, set one, 30 seconds. Set two, 12 reps, 30 seconds. Set three, 12 reps, 30 seconds. If you need to drop the weight, that's fine. 12 reps, 30 seconds. It will be exhausting. It will take every ounce of focus in your mind. You're gonna feel amazing though. And so what is very important when you are doing FST7, you need to be diligent with your protein every two and a half to three hours. Don't you dare miss one of those meals because those amino acids are absolutely critical to keep coming back in your body, keep refeeding your system and fueling the resynthesis of these muscle protein fiber fibers. And so make it your mission to feed your body what it needs. This will change your body very quickly. So again, do your best um, anywhere from one to three to four days of FST7. If it's a day that you're like, you know, today's just not the day for FST, then default to looking at your list of exercises or your lifts and just go three sets, 12 reps, maximum weight you can do for 12 reps with 45 to 60 second rest in between.
Make sure that you are always double checking your form. Shoulders down, fish hooks, lock them into your rib cage, grapefruit under your chin. You're gonna feel silly at the gym when you have this kind of regal presentation, but that enables your muscles to actually be in a mechanical and kinesthetic level of correctness. And so just look at other people, watch them. If they're rolling forward, the traps come forward, you're not hitting the right parts of your delts, your, your biceps, your anything. And so just be very careful, uh, be very mindful of mechanics of hips, knees, ankles, toes, body alignment. Yes, you can do these at home for sure. And it's just, you know, I could do FST7 without any weight on my bicep and just tension and go 12 reps and just bump that up and then boom, rest for 30 seconds. Do it again, set number two. If you're having a hard time keeping track of your sets, figure something out. I'll never forget when my mom, uh, she was really into swimming laps when I was growing up at the, at the pool. And she would get rings. And for each lap, she would move one over here, over here, over here, and then she'd move them back. And that's how she kept tra track of her laps. So even if you need to figure out something like moving your water bottle every two sets, and then you know it needs to go back, forth, back, forth, you figure that out. If you need to get a little notepad, make a little tick, 30 seconds isn't a ton of time. Um, and, and chances are you're gonna wanna grab a drink or something. Make sure that you do not stretch your muscle in the middle of training FST7. If you do stretch it, it needs to be less than six seconds. That is the rule. When you are working on training a muscle for strength, for maybe a little bit more fullness, for endurance. If you sit there and stretch it out, you're gonna take the elasticity out of the muscle. So it needs to be just quick and just for like, okay, getting some filling of energy and oxygen in there. The long static stretches of, okay, increased flexibility, those come when you're done training. So enjoy FST7. You can go watch other videos on FST7. Go just Google it, go YouTube it. Uh, it's incredible to watch. Uh, some of these really incredible athletes doing FST7. So again, Hanny Rambod, uh, killer trainer, just wonderful, wonderful. So let's get after it. Be intense, high volume, really get that heart rate up. It's going to push you. So connect your brain, maybe look up every day before you go into your training session, look up a quote that you can focus on, get the right music on. If you're listening to something that's like, la, 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 I doubt you're going to attack this with the intensity you need. You've got to grind in this training, uh, this training plan. So I'm excited for you to do it. Power your body one meal, one workout, one day at a time.